doesn't matter how experienced you are. Doesn't matter if you were if you are in the industry for for ten years or anything like that. You have to go through that procedure because we need you to understand that you understand the whole business. So I wanted to talk to two bar owners who are on top of their game here in Hong Kong to see what they do to keep a positive work environment, but also retain good staff. Let's see what they have to say. First things first, who are you? I'm a bartender working at Koa. My name is Jay. Working at Koa. I'm a co-founder of Koa, and I work there as well. And you, sir? My name's John. Uh, I run a little bar called The Diplomat and uh, another martini bar called Kyle and Bain in Hong Kong. Well, what I want to talk about is something that we've I've talked to both of you about already, and it's, it's customer service, but as it relates to work culture. Obviously, with the pandemic, it's kind of brought a big highlight to the way things are changing and existing problems that are already happening in the F&B industry. But I think worldwide, a lot of people aren't returning to the workforce, especially restaurants and bars. Uh, in a place like U.S., they have the unemployment. So people are off jobs, they're, un they're unemployed, and what they're getting paid for not working is actually more than what they were getting earned you know, in being a server, being a bartender, cook. Hong Kong, that's not the case. We don't have the unemployment, I don't think. In our industry, uh, I, I don't think so. Like We still have so many new bars and restaurants opening. There's still so many room for all the staff to like, you know, move around, and they, they, I mean, I don't see anybody jobless. Like, they all, there's always a job if they're in the F and B industry. I see more for hiring or hiring signs than mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. What do you guys think is the cause of that? If you consider the the pandemic, I mean, uh, COVID and everything, we have a lot of the locals that are not traveling right now. They are still going out to eat and drink. So as long as the bars and restaurants are not being restricted because of the regulations from the pandemic, I think we're doing okay. And because of that, you see a lot more bars and restaurants still opening. And uh, there's still a demand for staff all around. It didn't really affect uh, the business as long as if there is no bar, you know, shut down or no further crazy restrictions. I think because of that, it didn't really affect the un unemployment rate. For our industry, and the reason I wanted to talk to you both about this is when I go to I've been going to your places for know, a couple of years now, and I, I come in and, and I most of the time see the same faces, and they're smiling, they're happy, you know, they're, they're eager to talk, they they really care about that. I wanted to ask you guys, do you do anything specific to make sure that's the case? For me, uh, you know, we're such a small family. I mean, it's a, it's a small bar, and we try to do everything together. Uh, and also being a bartender myself, working for many companies in the past. I mean, I, I look back if what would be the thing that will make me stay longer in the company. And I think it always comes down to a relationship and, you know, prov providing more than just a job, right? For example, for us, we always uh, plan to do a lot of team building. We go outside, uh, uh, you know, uh, we always organize things with the team uh, to make sure we have a better bonding. We know each other uh, better as well and try to understand one another much better. It uh, doesn't matter if I'm the owner or anything like that. We all work equally in the bar. We don't have sort of that relationship of boss and staff. So we all work together. I think this really helps a lot. I mean, in a way, because it, it, it makes me closer to the team as well. And they also like to share things with me because of that. I like how the first word you said was family. It has to be, you know, like if you look at like big companies and small companies, like definitely the turnover is a lot higher if, if you do a comparison between big and small companies. And the benefit that we can provide is, 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 is that feeling, you know, of being in a family rather than, you know, coming to work because of work. We don't want Just them to job. feel like that. Yeah. I imagine you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, a pretty simple ethos with us, you know, the, the two most important people in general with us is first the guest and then the person that's serving them. And we, tr we try to live by that mentality pretty often, uh, as often as we can. The titles matter less to us, but Sachin is our bar manager, but Sachin has literally done every job up until becoming a bar manager. We have a, a new lead bartender, uh, or he just got promoted to lead bartender, but he, he has done every job up until the point he's gotten to lead bartender, where he, he now has new responsibilities. So we use the That's word right. family, but also we use that cautiously when, when we're talking about accountability as well, because we want to make sure everybody is accountable for what they do, what they're responsible for, obviously coming to work, you know, prepared. And when we have, when we, when we set those expectations, uh, everybody works together much better and then they see, and then they don't feel like, oh, just this one person gets the best life or anything like that. Everybody is on a level playing field and, uh, it, and, it, and it helps. You know? Adding to that, I think staff development plan is also very important. Uh, so if a staff is 
working with me for a long time. What can I do for that staff as yeah. well? Not just doing the same thing for the past two years, and not just you know increase their their salary. I mean, I mean that's the least we should do. But what what we need to look at is how can they grow with us? If they stay with us uh, longer, hopefully we can grow bigger as a business, and we can give them more opportunity as well. So that's I think an important point. Could you mention a couple of those opportunities? Just like yeah, we're opening a bar in Shanghai right now, for example. So one of our uh, Bartenders, uh, Robin, uh, we've sent him to Shanghai now as a bar manager. So he uh, got a promotion, and so he's managing the bar in Shanghai. So I mean, not just managing the bar, but also being part of the opening team and taking care of the entire, you know, uh, process from nothing to opening, basically. So that's something new for him as well. So always, you know, provide something that probably they've not experienced before. Trust them, uh, and also, you know, guide them. John, earlier you mentioned accountability. Do you have any, or either of you, do you have any metrics by which you hold your team accountable? Like, is there something tangible or in a training program? I think there's a variety of factors. I don't, I don't necessarily have a, a scale or a, or a, a training manual necessarily in that context. But I was working at some previous bars, and we, the term family was often thrown around. But then, you know, and they would just do that when they're having drinks and stuff like that. But they, they kind of abused the term because, you know, they would, they would have drinks and the next day somebody would be late by 30 or 40 minutes. And then it would kind of make a toxic work environment, but then they would throw that family word around again. And that's where I think where we would have a lot of accountability where it's like, hey, are you doing this? Are you doing that? So, I mean, Sachin schedules me for stuff to make sure I'm uh, just on doing certain things. And then I tell him our schedule and then what, what he's responsible for, and then it kind of trickles down. <laughs> And we, we set that in motion quite often. And, you know, we just we try to be prepared as possible for each week and tell them what's coming up. We do a lot of check-ins. If there's a time where we need, uh, I need to have a sit-down or have, like, a critical conversation with a, a team member, we, you know, it's a sit-down. First off, it's like, how are you? Is everything okay? Okay, well, these are the things that we kind of need to talk about, and then we go from there, uh, depending on the situation. I think adding to that... Um family thing that you just spoke about. I mean, we need to be firm, you know, yeah. uh, on certain things. There need to be boundaries all the time. And I think this yeah. happens uh, from within. We already have a culture at the bar. When we are actually at work, we're all serious at work. When we're not working, we can be, you know, very friendly and we can drink together, we can party together. But when it comes to work, we need to have that boundary. We need to, to respect one another's uh, task, you know, on what we're responsible for on that particular shift maybe i've been lucky or anything like that we don't actually face this sort of situation you know the staff go out and party and the next day they throw the family word around and say hey you know because we're a family like that never happened to us since we opened koa and hopefully it will not i think it's how we set the culture at the bar as well that's important to make them feel like okay work is work you know when we're off work we can have the the, the, the maximum fun that we want but when, we, when we're at work we need to be responsible for what we I think one of one thing I find admirable for from both your venues because you you both are at the ownership level of your of your respective venues. But when I come in, I'll just as easily see you either making a cocktail or or washing glasses. Like, and that I, I come from a I'm a chef background. So, yeah, I've seen you wash glasses. Too. Always, literally my favorite job. <laughs> I, I tell my I tell my team if I could just sit at the dishwasher and just rotate. It's, it's like yoga for bartenders. Yeah, you know? it's just and I can just talk to guests coming in and and then yoga. The, the team is making drinks and serving the food, and I'm just washing glassware and hanging out. Life it's, is good. Yeah. Life you, is you, nice. You can, you can chat with your guests. <laughs> you can wash your glasses without worrying about catching up with the dockets or anything like that. It's sort of like you're in a free zone doing your thing, and then you, can, you have the freedom to move around and do lots of things. Yeah, so I come from a chef background, so with that hierarchy, there's different stations. And so, yeah, we don't have that mobility. I mean, yeah, you, a chef will pick up a broom, a chef will do some dishes. But I think it depends on, on, on the night as well. I mean, we're not going to uh, send a, a person that's supposed to be making drinks to wash dishes that night, right? Unless we have a, more than enough staff. If not, we need to assign, you know, uh, different uh, staff for different uh, job on that particular day. I mean, if it's not a busy day, for example, I don't have to make the drinks. You know, I can go and wash the glasses. Let, let the team do the job, you know? Yeah. It depends. Yeah, exactly. Most Fridays and Saturdays, I'm afloat so because, you know, we, we have two separate rooms and usually I have to, you know, if there's VIPs in here, I have to be able to interact with them. And if I'm kind of stuck at a, a bartending station, which I would love to do as well, sometimes a guest might not either feel that they're getting 
you know, that ownership experience, or you know, which is very something some people like in Hong Kong. And so I need to kind of jump off the bar. I would have to jump off the bar, and then the bar gets backed up. So usually on a Friday or Saturday night, you'll catch me doing dishes up until about like nine, and then I start floating because we this fills back fills up, and then we go crazy. Do the staff pick up on that? Like, do they see it as an example that you guys lead and bounce around? They don't. It doesn't. Yeah, happen. absolutely. Like for me, yes. We have a manager position. We have bartender mm-hmm. position. We don't assign certain tasks because of their positions. I mean. For example, if it's required that the manager needs to to to, to uh, mop the floor, I mean they have to. If that's if they're free. If they have nothing to do, then we need to chip in and help each other out. But for us, it's not not about that. We we try to help each other out. I mean that that's why you know like we're a small team. Uh, we we need to understand one another. Not because you're assigned for this task, so it's your job. You know, not 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 like that. In the end of the day, we want to make sure that we finish the job together and we go home together. The next day, come back. You know. Uh, and, and do the same. So, I mean, that way it, it really builds uh, a, a better environment to work. And also, you know, as a team, when you do something together, it's much better. The results are better and, and things also happens quicker as well. And there's a sense of ownership for them as well. You know, Jay and I have actually had these conversations about like taking, you know, our nights off and letting them kind of run the show. And as long as they're still sticking to our ethos and our type of hospitality. You know, it can, you know, they can kind of change the bar into the into their type, you know, their style rather. And I love that. I try to encourage them to be like, you know, it's not John's bar, it's the diplomat. And you can make the diplomat something that's great on a on a night that I'm off. And that's the goal, to be honest, is them to really showing people how great the diplomat is in their own context. So when we first opened Koa, um, a lot of our guests in the beginning said, it's not Koa when you're not there, you know, like you have to be there. And I didn't like that. I mean, of course, I opened the place up because I want to be there all the time. But I also felt like it's not really a compliment, you know, like if you're telling me if I'm not there, you might not come. And it really took a while for us to get there. I mean, now I am in that zone where I can take a day off and let the team, you know, run the show and they're doing such a great job i mean how i know it's because a lot of the reservations that we receive is through my whatsapp so my whatsapp number is on the website so all the reservations that we receive are through that and when the guests they have a good time they always reply back on the same whatsapp and say we had a great time and even on those days when i'm not there so i have a hundred percent confident that even though i'm not there experience is still the same and this is exactly what i wanted since day one but it, it took a while you know in the beginning we were very raw and there's a lot of things we didn't know and it was a roller coaster right you know and then slowly and slowly we learned along the way and now we understand the business a little bit better than when we were uh when we first opened co well yeah i think you have to with most like even with doing this you have to open you have to get moving and then just course correct along the no, way absolutely and... like i mean you, you will not be able to grow or expand if you're always there uh know working 12 hours a shift because as an owner working t- at the same time it's very stressful sometimes you know because you're not just there doing the service but you're thinking about a lot of things at the same time yeah. so you need to step back and observe what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong and the only way you can tell is by stepping back because if you're there in that moment you won't be able to earlier you talked about um you have their own personality like how, how much do you communicate how, how internally like transparent are you with not uh, numbers or the the workings behind the scenes to your team like sales wise or just, i mean I, I i guess with them there's we never really have hidden like the sales and whatnot and like you know i i, I like when one of my bartenders goes comes up to me and goes hey what was our sales tonight like on a, on a busy friday and i i tell them and they're like yeah yeah we, you know like i love that like that's awesome so i'm pretty transparent with that i'm not I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily like start giving, you know, the sales over over a year or something like that. But uh, I tell them, hey, we, we do have some sales goals uh, on top of, you know, just giving good hospitality on top of that. But uh, if anything, I try to over communicate on anything that they want, that they're curious about, because if they're developing, then, then the bar is developing. Sachin is starting, my bar manager is starting to really uh, understand um, like cost analysis on cost of a drink and stuff like that. You know, he, he didn't know he wasn't really or skilled at all on an Excel sheet. And now he's starting to use it for scheduling and, and basic stuff and using the some of the, those techniques on it. So 
sometimes you have to give them those numbers so they can start working it out. Same for us. Like everyone have access to go on to the POS and look for numbers. And I think this is the only way that they will understand the business and make them feel like they're actually part of it. Like there's no point hiding it. I mean, why? If we're doing well, we we have to make sure that um, we can give them back in, in some way, right? And there's nothing for us to hide from the team. And this is the only way uh, they will understand the business and actually think of the business as, from my perspective, you know, they know which days are good and which days are bad based on those numbers that they can basically go up and look for. Going back to COVID and the pandemic and now with the staffing issues that the world's facing, are the staff giving any clues as to what kind of demands, like what they're looking for, what's going to keep them in one place or another? Have they been vocal about that? Or? Yeah, well, in the beginning, it was very tough. Like even for me, it was something new and it definitely hit us uh, very unexpectedly. Like we, we didn't know we're going to face this day, you know? So in the beginning, it was very tough and uh, it we have to do a lot of sit down and chatting with the team and, and, and try to understand, you know, their situation and everything. We wanted to provide as much as we can during the time we were not open, but also have to make sure that we're also looking after the business at the same time. It has to be a 50-50, you know, because if there's no bar, there's no job. So we have to make sure that we can kind of try to balance that. We also try not to give them, send them a message where we're trying to be unfair and just think about the business, but not the staffing. So we have to find that balance between the two. So in the beginning, uh, a lot of communication with the team and everything. And even though the time we were closed, we had to find ways to get them come back to work and uh, do something. You know, for example, we started our e-commerce website, uh, which helped with a platform for our guests to order things online and we could send them. And in the beginning, we did quite a lot of that with the team. Also trying to listen to what, what their expectations are during this time, but a lot of trial and error, I would say. But definitely we're much prepared now if there is another pandemic we have a better you know, vision of what we need to do. Could you tell us some of those topics that you guys discussed? Um, first, we need to make sure that if we all understand what's happening, because everybody have a different perspective. There were, there were news in, you know, in English, in Chinese. It was all around the place. Everybody have a different uh, perception about the situation. First, we have to make sure we all understand what's actually happening and how that's going to affect their life and the business and everything. Once everybody's on the same page, and then we started to talk about you know, things like what we can do make sure that we could still make some money where we could pay the staff, we could pay the rent because at that time we were still paying rent, even though we were closed, but we still had to pay rent, you know? So there were a lot of things uh, that was going on, but I think in the end of the day, we have to find that balance between, you know, like we need to make sure the staff are happy and also uh, we can still sustain the business. Yeah. I mean, the trendy term was pivot, right? So we did a lot of, so we turned Diplomat into a cafe for a few, um, couple of months or however long that that long lockdown was obviously we we developed takeaway cocktails which wasn't anything new and then we tried to exactly what jay said you know sit down with the staff tell them exactly what we're going through as a business and then what what our plan is moving forward um i, I mean i literally asked them for their patience I, you had, I i'm gonna need you guys to be patient on this because this doesn't seem like it's gonna just happen overnight where we all go back to normal we're all going to have to take some uh you know understand what's going on and take some sacrifices and whatnot yeah communicate every single day about what the plan is and weekly and monthly there was even a day where they literally shut down everything for a day it's really frustrating for a staff member not as well as a some, as a person who owns a business because you know when you're working you just want to know what your schedule is going to be what's going to happen and, you know, when, you, when you're kind of in that powerless position, it, it's very frustrating. So, you know, just sitting down with the team, asking, for, you know, for their patience and understanding on what's going on, because we all had a basic understanding of what's going on. But at the same time, I mean, when restaurants are closed for literally a day and then open the next, your information is just as good as mine. You know, I, I, I welcome advice from my team as well. Like, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about this? Uh, are you okay? Does anybody feel weird about working in central when central was really hot when, with cases, you know, cause, yeah. cause a lot of people live with their families. Yeah. So that was the other thing. Like, uh, you know, we, we also had to ask the team to vote whether are they okay to come back to work during the pandemic, you know, because what he said, it just reminded me as well. But of course, like, uh, for most of the staff, they, they, they said yes, because I mean, if they come, we can stay open and hopefully we could make some revenue and we could also pay, pay the team back because we, we just don't want to decide as a company uh, only. We, we need to make sure that everybody has a say uh, in, in what they're doing. 
did any new practices emerge for both you guys? I mean, the cafe was kind of temporary, but mm. has anything, any new ideas come popped out from those discussions for, or for, for, for me? I mean, the, the e-commerce is a is yeah. a long term thing. It, it wasn't just because of the pandemic. I mean, if it, if it wasn't because of the pandemic, we would not have started it. But now we did. Uh, it's a long term thing. Uh, we still get orders online, especially spirits, mostly spirits now. But uh, during the pandemic, it was mostly cocktails, because most of the guests come down to Koa, they would rather come down and drink instead yeah. of like drink at home. But sometimes, uh, because since we specialize in agave spirit, they trust us, they know our selection, and they want to buy from us when it comes to agave. So that's why we have this e-commerce for, for a long term. And the other thing is a uh, collaboration with, with, with bars and restaurants and uh, breweries. You know, we did quite a lot of collaboration to make products that are interesting. And also, for example, we collaborated with Young Master to do Tan Paloma. Uh, and because they have a wider reach than us, to be honest, and they were able to do things we probably couldn't do in that quantity. That's why, you know, we collaborated with them. We did our signature recipe uh, a collaboration with them. And yeah, it was very successful. We did two rounds. Uh, and the first round was very, very successful. Uh, I think we sold 3,000 plus cans uh, in a very short amount of time. So we had to do a new batch as well. I remember buying a case of those myself. Yeah, it's quite yeah <laughs> thanks for that. I had a smaller fridge back then too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, food. people loved it. And La of food. Yeah. Canned cocktails are not widely available here in Hong Kong. That's why I think. Also, a lot of our uh, guests, they already like the drink, so it was easier for them to you know, just buy and drink at home. That makes a lot of sense. If I come to your place to apply for a job, what's going to get me a, a definite no? It's, it's a very cliche term, like, you know, being outgoing and friendly and all that, but, but this is exactly what we're looking for. We want somebody who actually is comfortable to talk to people. That's the one of the, the, the uh, criteria. And if I know a person who's coming to us for an interview and I know from his history that that person is not very interactive, I will tell that person and say, oh, by the way, I want to actually hire you, but this is the weakness I see in you for us. Um, if you're okay to sort of you know improve in that aspect, then we'll definitely give it a go. And we would always try out with a trial instead of just saying a no-no hard time, come to work, just try out and see whether you like the job. You know, that's also very important, right? So yeah, just yeah. from one side, uh, we need to make sure that they like the job because I did have a situation where I hire somebody and they tell me like, oh, I left Koa, this, that, and all. But when they come to work, their expectations are completely different because because of the working hours or because of, of, of the whole thing, right? Like maybe it just doesn't suit their style. And end up maybe they only work for a couple of months and then they leave the job. So I think it's best that have them come uh, as a trial, uh, as a part-time and, and feel it as well, whether are they okay or not with the job and, and vice versa for us as well to see whether that person can fit within the team. So these are the things uh, basically we look for. We don't just hire a person and say, okay, you're full-time from tomorrow. I mean, we did that mistake before and now mm. we learn from that and we want to make sure that, you know, it, it should be a yes from both sides. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I think the way Jay and I run the bars, like the bartender just doesn't just bartend. Like at least um, here, like they do everything. Yeah. So if if uh, maybe a, a, a no for me, if somebody's like, I don't serve tables, well, you have to. Yeah, or I just want to work in the bar. Like yeah. we rotate the staff. Like yeah. everyone at Koa, they make drinks. Everyone at Koa, they cook. Everyone at Koa, they have to work on the floor. And, and also we assign a person to be host you know like receiving reservations so everybody needs to do all that in order to understand the business in and out so if you tell me you're just if you want to join co-op because you just want to bartend and you don't want to work on the floor sorry then you're not able to fit the team you yeah. know like, yeah. because everybody else agrees to that so you have to agree to that like, we can't have one person with different standards and the bar isn't the, the bar isn't a kitchen right like, at least in that so if you don't want to talk to people and you just want to make stuff, I encourage you to cook. But with the bar and why we encourage people to serve on the floors, because the cocktails are important, hundred percent. But the interaction with the guests is, is really dire. Yeah. I mean, you can't serve anybody uh, a, a smoky agave, you know, concoction unless <laughs> you have a bartender that knows what that can talk to that person he or she needs to develop that skill set and we and we really try to develop that here and how they interact with guests and how to recommend a a, a cocktail 
uh, and you know, different groups of people and how you interact with them. You know, you know a group of like 40 year old ladies is going to be different than a group of like 20 year old guys. You want to approach everything in, with a standard, but then how you can play off of it a little bit differently. And it's really important. If somebody just wants to come here and just bang out drinks, it's like maybe this isn't the, the best spot for you. Also, uh, I mean, we, we do have a, a procedure if we hire a staff. Uh, let's say if we agree to hiring you as a full-time, uh, you're not going to go in the bar and make drinks the first day. I mean, we have a procedure. So maybe we'll start you off with a bar bag. Uh, just observe, because like we mentioned earlier, washing glasses is probably one of the best jobs because then you can actually observe what's happening. You can do your glasses. You can chit-chat with the guests. That's why... Uh, the new staff, they go through that procedure where they observe, you know, first few days, you know, see how they feel about the service and everything, wash glasses. And then when they understand that part of the job, okay, we promote them. Now they start making the bar snacks, you know. Our bar snacks are very simple, so they learn how to do that. So they can help us out during the weekend, for example, because we need the, the, the most experienced staff outside where they can host the people. So once that person knows about that part of the job where we're making those food and snacks, now that person can move out on the floor. And of course, during that time, they're also doing other things like revising the menu and all that. So when they're out on the floor, they are ready to actually serve the guest. Uh, for example, when we make the drink, they need to basically explain the cocktail. And if, and if they don't know uh, the cocktail, then probably it's not the same experience as if a guest is actually staying at the bar. So they explain all that. Once they're doing that job well, then we move so there's always a procedure. No, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. It doesn't matter if you were, or you are in the industry for, for 10 years or anything like that. You have to go through that procedure because we need you to understand that you understand the whole business and you're able to help the team. You know, And that's the only way you can if you understand each and every aspect of the job. Yeah. And through that procedure, you're talking about friendly and outgoing, like that, that eventually comes out if someone isn't very strong in that area? Absolutely. They, they feel more comfortable because this is also the time where they get to know the team as well, and then they are more confident about how we run things. Imagine if I put somebody on the floor the first day to come to work. Like They're not going to be comfortable. And, but the guests don't see that staff as a new staff. You know, they have expectations when they come to uh, COA. So everybody who's working on the floor, they need to be 100% ready for any questions guest is going to ask you and we rarely do things like if a guest is asking a staff about something and the staff have to refer to the manager like that doesn't happen in co-op most of the time they have to handle the situation themselves and i mean things like if a guest is asking you about a recommendation for example or maybe they're they're not very familiar with tequila or mezcal like and they're asking you questions about that the staff needs to be able to answer all that without saying oh let me call my manager to answer a question want to make sure that every Person single staff yeah. knows exactly what they're doing and this takes time i mean i don't expect you to know the first day you join the job that's why when you're going through this procedure from from this position of work you're also at the same time we're providing you know training as well to, to them so asia is uh, mainly the person uh, who is in charge of doing all the training for the team so because she loves doing that and and her long-term goal is to be a professor professor one day so, so it's perfect for her to sort of like build her skills through, you know, uh, training the staff and everything. So that's the procedure. They get to know the job and then we give them. Basically, when they're ready, that's when they can do that job, not on the job. And then they need to learn. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I get <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, there's and there's different ways to do things, you know, and, and, and how to manage your team. And like, I think so basically... I think Jay and I both kind of have like a, if you will, an apprentice programming kind of, you know, we're going to give you a job where you can observe and look at stuff for about a month or two or seeing, uh, depending on your development. And then we're, and then we'll excel you. And then when it comes to like floor experience and doing stuff like that, they are expected to answer questions and stuff, but we also want to relay to them that we are a resource to them. If there comes an issue, I mean, we get very busy. I mean, just we both, both bars get very busy on the weekends and, you know, sometimes uh, guests can be difficult. Um, I never want them to be, especially my junior bartenders, to have to be in a position to tell a guest no. So if that ever arises, the either the manager or myself can be that person's resource and we can handle that situation. So they can just focus on making sure people are having a good time and getting drinks and answering questions that they feel comfortable with as opposed to 
dealing with a you know abnormally difficult guest or something, so we can just take care of it. And then they can see us handle that situation and how we and how we go about it. And then they're learning how to handle that situation, so maybe they can do it next time. I mean, obviously, if a person doesn't know how to fix a situation, we don't expect them to fix it no matter what. I mean, yeah. that's not what I meant. Uh, they can always refer to us to help them, to guide them. Like I said, we don't expect the person to know everything when they're new at their job. They're, we're always here to help them out. And also our training provides that sort of comfort level as well. Right? So they can always come out to us and reach out to us. But also they need to be equipped for questions, the basic stuff that our guests ask normally on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Like, like what are the, the top 10 questions that we always get? Like we already train them for that. So we don't expect them to answer things that are completely out of their comfort zone in the first place. And that rarely happens. Like nobody's going to come to you and ask you about things that you completely have no answer to. Like most, mostly those things that are being asked are, are usually what people ask normally. So, so that's why they, they, they need to know those, those answers to those FAQs. questions. FAQs. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Frequently asked questions. Yeah. What are your expectations or predictions for work, work culture and service as we move out of 2021? The past decade in Hong Kong, I have seen a drastic change in the culture already. Um, we see bartenders, they are more engaging. Uh, we didn't have that maybe a decade ago in Hong Kong, to be honest. Uh, now it's definitely changing. I think they're understanding the job much better. I think this is also because they're traveling more, they're going to other countries, and they like to visit bars, and they observe bartenders, like how they interact with their guests. So I think because of that, when they come back to Hong Kong, they, they, they want to do the same. I can give you an, an example like, um, when I started off bartending, I, w I was born here, I grew up here, and I started bartending from Hong Kong. And I basically knew what I was taught in Hong Kong until I had a chance to go to Australia. So I worked in Australia for like a year and a half. And when I observe uh, bartenders over there, how they interact you know, with their guests, or even going to cafe, for example, it completely blew my mind. Like, okay, this is how you're supposed to do it, or oh, this is something you can do as well you know when i came back to hong kong i had a complete different mentality about you know, uh, hospitality and, and how i should interact with the guests so i think right now uh i mean beside the covid pandemic of course prior to that i think a lot of the bartenders have been traveling quite a lot and they've seen what others are doing outside and, and that's how you sort of like learn from one another when they come back to hong kong they do the same so i i hopefully uh would expect or anticipate that this is going to improve there's still a lot of room for improve, uh, improvement, but that's going to improve for sure in the coming few years. It's that interaction uh, with the guest part. Uh, I predict crabby bar owners complaining about something or other that they can't control. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the, you know, I think the pandemic has kind of taught us um, so many different things, and you know, the, the, this is this can be a, a volatile industry. So there, there, you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself and taking care and making sure your staff is being well taken care of and i think over the next years a few years or so you, you might see more of that especially in the western world hong kong uh we'll see how how they take it and whatnot but i don't pretend to know i know everything about hong kong i'm very new to it still so i learn every day when i'm here and i i don't know everything i, mean, I was born here yeah no 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 okay. i'm just well i i think sometimes people come into hong kong and they they just hang out in, cent uh, in Central every day, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know everything. This is Hong Kong. This, this, I mean, I, I thought I knew Hong Kong when I worked at Lillian Bloom, and then when I moved, I was like, my mind just blew up after working at what's a place like Wagyu Mafia and stuff like that. And so it, it really changed my, my thought process about Hong Kong. And so it, it, and that happens quite often. So I hope that we really have these thoughtful, you know, bars that, you know, people understand, like, this is a volatile industry, and if you open up something, you have to have a – a solid niche you ha you yourself have to be there and do the checks and balances and and hopefully we can I mean, our bar culture in hong kong is becoming incredibly strong and i'm very honored to be a part of it and so i think there are more uh bars owned by bartenders the past few years so yeah. i think this also uh helps because when you're a bartender and you open a bar like me john uh people like agong and you know antonio like like even Gaga next door, for example, because we're there 
And we did that because we love doing this and we're passionate about what we're doing. And when we do certain things in front of our team, they basically follow, right? I mean, they, they look up to us and, and we try to do what we're doing uh, with, with, with the service and everything. I think this also helps uh, as well in, in terms of that culture that I was talking about earlier. Uh, when you're, you know, with the team working together, they look at you, they look up to you and they learn from you. So I think this is also uh, a big part of, you know, how things are going to improve in the future. You see more and more uh, bartenders and uh, or restaurants. There's a term chef that gets, restaurant. yeah, there's a term that gets thrown, you know, like chef driven restaurant. And I think you'll see more like bartender driven bars you know, like, and, and, and you'll start seeing really quality stuff come out. Yeah. More passion, you know, like you'll see for sure. And uh, definitely more interaction with the guests. So more passion, better work culture, and it just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. I like Hopefully that. that's the, that's the goal. <laughs> when we talk to our team, you know, we really don't want it to just be focused around just partying and drinking and over and getting overworked, you know. Uh, we've made arrangements now where the staff get gets a little bit more time off. Another good part about learning and excelling here is that eventually you can do prep shifts where you can come in a little bit earlier and you get to leave a little bit earlier. So you have you have a night to yourself. So it's like, hey, work a little bit hard, work hard, and we're not saying work hard for two years and you get this. You know, you you put in the work and you and you, you do well for the next three to four months. You can start doing prep shifts and, you know, and you, you can do that. And we do it at, for a week at a time. So for a whole week, you can go home by 10 or 11, uh, if, you know, depending on how busy it is. But and then, you know, you can kind of have an early night to yourself. So really try to do stuff like that. Also about like going out and drinking. Um, there's one thing I always remind the team is to make sure that you know your limits because um, a, a I mean, if you work in this industry, it's all about reputation. At the end of the day, if if you're if if you're nice, people are going to be nice. If, if if you're not nice, that's how people are going to treat you back. So when you go out, and if you know that you're at your limit, and and you and you drank too much, and now this is the time where you're going to say things you're not supposed to say. Go home, <laughs> right? Go home because you're not just representing yourself, but also representing the team, the bar, and everything. So this is one thing. I always, you know, remind like I'm, I'm not forcefully telling them not to do it, but, but I just rem constantly reminding them when you got when you guys go out, when you drink, you party, make sure that you behave, you know, like, I mean, everybody have different tolerance, but then there are people sometimes when they get drunk, they can be completely different, you know, like, so these are things you need to look out for if, if that's your personality. But when I drink, uh, I want to go to sleep. You, know, like, <laughs> but I, you will not see me talking differently or anything like that. I would just. I, I'll be very tired and I want to go go and sleep. But then there are people sometimes when they drink, they can be completely different. You know? And I'm sure working in this industry, we have yeah, seen quite a I've lot. Of it, so. I have two modes. Sometimes it's either a, very it's, friendly it's just or surprises yeah, you. Right? Uh, I mean, Jay's had to deal with me plenty of times, so it's fine. <laughs> I was actually referring to him. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I wish you great success and many more drinks to come. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us yeah. on the show. Um, my first my first interview. Honor. Pleasure is ours. Yeah, thank yeah, you thank so much. You. Thanks, thanks for having us. You guys want to mic up, headphone up, check your levels? I have no idea. So should I put this on? Am okay. I in the right one? Have you ever done this before? Hmm? Never done this. How's my voice sound? <laughs>